Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory. Or should I say Game Show Theory? Because gaming isn't just limited to consoles and controllers, and well, yes, it may be interesting to know that Jinx isn't racist, chances are it won't help you to win a brand new car! A Ford Escort LX, a small car that offers comfort, style, and fun, and an economical price. This four-door comes with standard features, front and rear floor mats, rear window defroster in California emission. It's a Ford Escort! So this week we're entering a world of fabulous prizes and gaudy suits. A world of bobs, from Barker to Eubanks, with more rods and winks and dicks than you can shake a skinny microphone at. So start pricing up your turtle wax and rice-a-roni, Joe Millionaire, because this week I'm teaching you how to press your luck without becoming the weakest link. In other words, how simple probability can help you win thousands of dollars on daytime television. In a few weeks, I'll be appearing in the studio audience of Let's Make a Deal, a classic game show from the 1960s that was revived in 2009 when the entertainment industry officially ran out of creativity. Now, I won't know if I'm actually going to be a contestant until I get there, but it pays to come in prepared. Oh, and if you're wondering why people are dressed like Chef Boyardee, remember that this is TV. If they're going to give you something for free, you bet your sweet bippy they're going to humiliate you in front of millions of people watching from home first. So if you've never seen the show before, the premise is that the host walks around the studio audience giving away prizes, money, mystery boxes, whatever, and then offers contestants the choice to either keep what they have or trade it in for something behind a curtain or a door. One tends to be a nice prize, while the other is an ostrich, or some other creature that you really don't want to keep in your backyard. These joke prizes are called zonks. At the end of the game, the top winners are presented with three doors. Hidden behind one is a big prize for the day, while the other to hide more zonks. So let's assume I go to the show and get to select one of the three final doors. Behind one is a brand new kitchen set straight out of the Johnson era, while behind the other two are donkeys or some other beast of burden. I choose a door, say door number one, at which point the host opens one of the doors I didn't pick to reveal a donkey. He then says that I can change my door if I want to. Assuming I want to win a vomit-colored kitchen set, should I switch or stay? Or does it even make a difference. It seems like it shouldn't matter, right? With only two doors left, my odds seem to be 50-50, one door hiding a hideous frigid air and the other holding my future pet Boro Bruce. But think again. At the beginning of the game, I had a one-third chance of choosing correctly and a two-thirds chance of choosing a zonk, at which point the host always opens a door with a donkey. If I choose the kitchen first and then switch, well, I literally get my ass handed to me. But if I chose a donkey, Donkey in the first round and then switch, I'm guaranteed to win since the other donkey has already been revealed. Thus, with my first choice, I'm actually hoping to choose a donkey. Since the odds of choosing a donkey at the beginning of the game is two-thirds, by switching, I now have a two-thirds chance of walking home with a refrigerator that'll be deemed environmentally unsafe in 20 years. Simply put, choosing to switch always maximizes your chance of winning. If you're still confused, think about it with a hundred doors, 99 donkeys, and one kitchen set. You pick a door. Obviously, you have a 1 out of 100 chance of choosing correctly, which isn't very likely. But then the host, who knows exactly where the prize is, opens 98 doors with donkeys before offering you the chance to switch. The odds that the kitchen set is behind your door is still 1 out of 100, but because the host knowingly cut the field down to one other specially selected door, the odds are 99 to 100 that by switching, you win. It may seem like sticking with your door is the right choice, especially now that you're so close to winning, but in actuality, you're no closer than when you originally started. This situation is actually a famous probability question named the Monty Hall problem, named after Let's Make a Deal's first and most famous host. Which leaves me with just one final question. How was this color ever in fashion? Apparently, the pot cloud created by the mass of hippies in the 60s made everyone colorblind. But hey, that's just a theory. Ugh. But no game show marathon would be complete without a trip to the granddaddy of daytime gamery, the highlight of every elementary school sick day, The Price is Right. Specifically, the game that everyone loves to see, Plinko. As a matter of fact, I asked them, why did you name it Plinko? They named it Plinko because that goes plink, 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 plink. <laughs> Some of our people drink. 
102 pegs, 5 chips, $50,000 on the line. Drop a chip, win the amount of the slot it lands in. Elegant, addicting, and impossible as f- <laughs> You see, the game has been a part of the show since 1983, and yet for as many times as it's been played, no one has ever earned the maximum prize. How could they, considering it's a game where you randomly drop tokens down a pachinko board? So is there a way to beat the system? To have the odds be ever in your favor? Here's a diagram of the plinko board. Though there are a total of 102 pegs, only 12 will matter as the chip makes its way to the bottom. Assuming that at each peg, the chip is equally likely to go either left or right, where should a contestant drop their chip to have the best chance of landing in $10,000? Let's start with slot 5, right in the middle and directly above the $10,000 space. If the chip is going to earn us the most money, it'll need to travel left 6 times and right 6 times, in no particular order. To figure out the probability of this happening, we can use what's known as the binomial distribution. Here's the formula, which is one of those intimidating math formulas that aren't so bad if you work through them slowly. In fact, by the end of this paragraph, you'll be able to show this off at parties and attract all the women. This top number here represents the number of trials, or in our case 12, for the number of pegs the chip will hit. This bottom number is the number of times we needed to go left, or 6. Since we're assuming the chip has an equal likelihood of going left or right, the probability is one half for each, which goes here and here. And finally, these relate to how many times we want it to go left left, and how many times we want it to go right. Through some boring calculations, we find that the probability of landing in the middle if dropped in slot 5 is about 22.56%, or about one-fifth of the time. Not bad, but can we do better? Take a look at what happens if you try dropping it in slot 4. We would need for it to go left 5 times and right 7. Plugging that into our equation gives us about 19.34%, or significantly less. Slot 6 would be the same since the board is symmetrical, and the odds continue to decrease Increase as we move away from the center. In short, the Plinko board is a type of normal distribution, or bell curve, where more things wind up towards the center than either extreme. So our best strategy is to drop it in the center slot. That said, what are the odds we walk away with that grand prize of $50,000? Well, to determine the odds of multiple events all happening at the same time, you multiply their probabilities together. Thus, getting all five chips into the $10,000 slot means 20 22.56% times itself five times, or to the fifth power, or 0.0584%. Ha! It's no wonder no one has ever officially won the game. With odds that low, you're more likely to see Michael Bay direct an Oscar-winning art film. So that said, today's episode may not guarantee you a win, but the next time you're in an audience and told to come on down, remember your math, loyal theorists, and you may just be lucky enough to go home with a grill shaped like a large green egg. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a strange urge to go spay and neuter my cat. But hey, that's just a theory. A game show theory. Thanks for watching. It's an electric. Oh, yes. It's an electric. It's an electric. My pride of Krishna. Air Krishna. Air Krishna. Air Krishna. Reliable economical variety. Keyboard touch. In Hong Kong, Taiwan. Some of them reliable economical variety. Keyboard touch. In Hong Kong, Taiwan. Reliable economical variety. Keyboard touch. In Hong Kong, Taiwan. Some of them reliable economical variety. Keyboard touch. In keyboard touch. In Hong Kong, Taiwan. 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 Hong